Hey guys, it's Pelly. I hope you're having a great day. This video is about the murder of Maurizio Gucci, a tale of greed, revenge, and of course, fashion. Today, Gucci is a name synonymous with luxury. It has one of the most recognizable logos out there, and the word Gucci itself became a popular slang over the years, meaning good or great. From rappers to influencers, anyone who wants to show off their status does it by purchasing Gucci. While everyone recognizes the name, not everyone knows about the scandal that rocked the fashion world. This is the murder of Gucci. It's a family business. Our story begins on September 16, 1948 in Florence, Italy, when Maurizio Gucci was born. His father, Rodolfo Gucci, was one of five sons of Guccio Gucci, the founder of the fashion house of Gucci. The Italian label was founded in 1921 and started out as a luggage manufacturer, producing luxury goods for Italian upper echelon. During the Second World War, the label introduced their now iconic double G logo and their highly recognizable green and red stripes. The label later introduced jewelry and saw incredible success with wealthy upper classes, being acclaimed for their opulent designs. After the death of Guccio, the control of the brand was passed down to his three sons, Aldo, Vasco, and Rodolfo. Growing up, Mauricio was an only child. His mother passed away when he was five years old, and he had what was described as a very isolated childhood. At age 15, Mauricio worked in the package room of their family business. Around his early 20s, he met Patricia Reggiani and fell in love. Patricia was a socialite from a small town outside of Florence. The two met at a party for the elite in Milan and quickly got engaged. In October 1972, Mauricio got married to Patricia, despite disapproval from his father. Rodolfo believed that Patricia was only after his money and his last name. Things got so bad between the father and son that Rodolfo even tried to have Mauricio removed from the family business. Patricia, who understood the importance of family and the name of Gucci, convinced her husband to make amends with his father. After getting on Rodolfo's good side, the couple later had two daughters, Allegra and Alexandra. In 1983, following the death of Rodolfo, Maurizio inherited his father's major stake in the fashion house and made his wife the chief advisor. He shook the family business when he decided he wanted full control of Gucci. During this time, while the brand was making money, it was losing prestige due to their licensing deal. Maurizio, who noticed the rise of Italian fashion houses like Versace and Prada, wanted to evolve the brand and reclaim their opulent reputation. He believed that the only way to do this was to have full control. This created several scandals for the brand. After a series of events and careful planning on Maurizio's part, he became the official chairman of Gucci. But there's a saying, especially in business, you win some and you lose some. The family drama did not end after Maurizio gained full control of the brand. It actually created another problem with him and his wife. He was recklessly spending money and had less time for his family. Patricia was angry. She hated the way he was managing the company and made sure he knew how she felt. One day, Maurizio had enough of Patricia. He packed his bag, told his daughter he was taking a business trip, and never came home. Under Maurizio's poor leadership, the company started losing millions upon millions. After 66 years as a family-owned business, he was forced to sell his share in the company to InvestCorp. After leaving his brand to save it, American designer Tom Ford became the creative director of the fashion house and brought prestige back into Gucci. The brand was once again the definition of opulence and luxury. It was everything Maurizio wanted, but because of his action, he had to give up control of his family fashion house. Gucci, the family-owned business, was no more. The Hitman and the Black Widow 
Maurizio fell in love with Patricia at first sight. She reminded him of Elizabeth Taylor. While Patricia, on the other hand, said she thought he was a loser because he showed up in a small car. Patricia Reggiani was born December 2nd, 1948 in Vinola, Northern Italy. Her mother was a waitress and her father was a wealthy entrepreneur. Unlike introvert Maurizio, she was a socializer who enjoys the finer things in life. The socialite described her marriage to Maurizio to the other Capulets and Montagu. The couple family couldn't get along and she was never accepted by the Gucci family. The couple separated in 1985 after Maurizio never came back home from his business trip. Patricia resented Mauricio for his abandonment and on top of that, he had begun to settle down with a younger woman named Paola Frankie. The house of Gucci was also sold off, so her two daughters lost their status as the brand's heiress and her upper echelon image was disintegrating. Patricia made sure the world knew how she felt, doing interviews and exposing everything to the world. In 1992, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor. After feeling like she received no support from Maurizio during her operation and recovery, she wanted him dead. She been wanting him dead, but after her surgery, motivated by the inheritance due to her and her daughter, it was something she was set out to do. The thought of Mauricio's death became an obsession for her and she made it known, consulting everybody from her cleaners to a lawyer about how she could go about it. Jessopina Oriyama or Bina, moved in with Patricia allegedly to help write a book about her relationship with Maurizio. Bina and Patricia were close friends. They were each other's confidants, knowing everything about each other. One night, Pina got in contact with Ivano Savioni, a doorman at a hotel in a sketchy part of Milan. She explained to him what she wanted and he agreed to help her but needed a down payment first. Pina went back to Patricia for the money and she agreed to pay. In court, Pina revealed her struggle with debt and claimed she gave in to Patricia's request to find a hitman in an act of desperation while Patricia claimed she had no idea Bina had gone and found a killer and that she only paid the down payment because she was blackmailed. Ivano then negotiated with Orazio Chicala, who agreed to help and hire the hitman. While all of this was going down, Maurizio was trying to rebuild his reputation as a businessman. He was living with Paolo Frankie with rumors of them getting married floating around. On March 27, 1995, a hitman, wearing a denim jacket and a baseball cap, followed Maurizio into his office building in Milan and shot him three times in the back and once in the head. The hitman also shot the building's doorman before jumping into his getaway car and disappearing in the streets of Milan. Detectives knew Maurizio had plenty of enemies that wanted him dead, but Paolo Franchi was adamant that Patricia had something to do with his assassination. The day after his murder, Paolo was evicted from her home she shared with Maurizio. The eviction paper was filed by his daughters less than three hours after his death. Soon after, Patricia moved in. While Patricia, who was nicknamed the Black Widow by the press, was a suspect, officials also suspected other businessmen and family members for his death. During their investigation, they came up empty-handed. They also couldn't connect Patricia to the murder, so the case went cold for two years. Remorse? For two years, Patricia lived comfortably, always professing her innocence and for two years, it looked like she was gonna get away with it. But one phone call on January 9th, 1997 would change everything. The anonymous caller met up with the chief of police and told him Ivano Savioni was going around bragging about his involvement in the Gucci murder. The police began investigating him and got his confession on tape by working with one of his close friends. In the early morning of January 31st, 1997, police showed up on Patricia's doorstep and arrested her. They also arrested her best friend, Bina Ariyama, for organizing the hitman, Ivano Savioni for his involvement, Horacio Chicala for being the getaway driver, 
and Benedetto Serralo for being the hitman that killed Gucci. Benedetto was not a trained killer. He was a man desperate for money. And just like Patricia, he always maintained his innocence despite the evidence surrounding him. During their trial, Pina turned on Patricia and Patricia turned on Pina. Patricia's main argument was that she never carried out with her threat against Gucci and that Pina was the one who orchestrated the murder and then blackmailed her. Pina Oriyama was sentenced to 25 years. Ivano Savioni received a 26-year sentence. Getaway driver Orazio Chicala got 29 years. And accused killer Benedetto Serralo received a life sentence, a term that normally runs to 30 years. Patricia Rijani got 29 years. She was found guilty for plotting the 1995 murder of her ex-husband, Maurizio Gucci. After the ruling, Patricia pleaded mental instability because her brain tumor had altered her behavior and personality and therefore her conviction should be overturned. It didn't. When interviewed during her incarceration, the Black Widow said, I don't think of myself as innocent. I think of myself as not guilty. Lady Gucci In October 2016, after serving 18 years, Patricia was released from prison. Pina and Patricia have no plan to rekindle their friendship, with Pina saying, I completely erased Patricia. I removed her from my life and I will never be friends with her again. Patricia's daughters also don't want anything to do with her. Her daughters Alexandra and Allegra, who inherited their father's money, refused to pay their mother her divorce settlement. When asked why she didn't kill her ex-husband herself, she said, My eyesight is not so good and I didn't want to miss. But she also said, I've had other relationships, but nothing like with Maurizio. He was my one true love. A film based on the events and aftermath of the murder of Maurizio Gucci is planned for release in 2021. It stars Lady Gaga, Adam Driver, Jared Leto, and Sama Hayek. Meanwhile, Gucci continues to flourish as a brand. It is recognized for its high-end fashion and not the scandal from the family its name came from. The brand is valued at $22.6 billion and is ranked as one of the world's most valuable brands. Well, that's the end of the video. What a wild ride. I really hope you enjoyed this storytelling style and please let me know if you want more like this. Don't forget to like and comment, subscribe for more fashion-related videos, and remember to keep living that fashion life. Bye!